I absolutely love fishing with a stick flow because you've got to present the bait to the fish. And I always feel the more you concentrate and get that float to run straight, the more fish that you'll catch. This is a method that I've fished with virtually all my fishing career. And, and I absolutely love fishing with a stick float. Today I'm here at Sprotbra on the River Don. I'm actually downstream of the road bridge that runs over the, the river where the weir is. The A1 bridge is just downstream of where I'm fishing and often anybody passing over the A1 will have seen the Doncaster Wharf that I'm actually fishing today. Stick floats are almost dead straight. They've just got a very subtle taper from top to bottom and very different to most floats because it's rubbered on the line, generally with three rubbers. I like to place one at the bottom of the float, one in the middle and then one at the top. I always have a rubber in the middle of the float just in case the rubber at the top of the float breaks. It's very rare this happens, but it's just a safeguard having one in the middle of the float. The float itself, the one with the plastic base that I've used today, has a balsa top and a plastic bottom to it. And because the plastic's quite heavy, makes a good float and is very, very stable in the water when you're trying to run through the swim. We choose the plastic at the bottom of the float because it doesn't vary like wood and cane that we used to use with these floats. So every time you get a uniform float. The stick floats that I've used today, there's four in the range from half a gram up to a gram and a half. What's absolutely brilliant about a stick float is you can cover all the swim that you're fishing. You can run as far down as probably even 40 metres at times. But of course you're trying to fish through where the bait is, so it's, it's important to feed quite accurately. What I've done today, I've started a little bit too far out on this river. In the, the, probably the flow was slightly too strong for the fish that I've caught and I found it better to come in. I probably started about four rod lengths out and finished up maybe fishing just two and a half rod lengths out where the flow and the crease of the flow was very, very nice and also in a straight line. And that's quite important. The float wants to be running down the swim in a very straight line with the flow. There's probably three baits that I like to use when I'm fishing with a stick float. Maggots is probably the best one for me. I've caught lots and lots of weights of fish using maggots. Casters is another very good bait for fishing with a stick float. And also loose feeding hemp can also be good with a stick float. All these three baits you feed very regularly. What you're trying to do is almost create a tunnel of bait down the river all the time. Today you'll have noticed that I've been restricting the line from the actual reel. So what I've been trying to do is peel the amount of line off I wanted for that float to carry on down the swim without jerking the float about. So I'm peeling the line off the reel nice and slowly. Of course, every now and again then what I've done, I've held on to that line just to hold the float back just for maybe three, four, five seconds and then let it travel again. And often this can produce a bite as the hook bait starts to fall with the loose feed. Every day is different. Some days the fish just want it running dead straight and just running with the flow. And then other days checking the bait to lift the bait up is a great way to catch them. Making the rig land correctly on the cast is probably one of the most important parts. If you get that wrong at the start and the float just lands any old out, it's difficult to get the control. Today I've cast the float in sideways, so I've actually flicked the float maybe two or three metres downstream. And by doing this, you're straightening everything out as the float lands. So the bulk of the shot and the maggot on the hook 
is landing downstream of the float. This is quite important because once you cast in like this and make sure that the float lands correctly, you'd, it's very easy to get the line at back of the float to control the float as it moves down the floor. There's two types of rod that I like to use for this style of fishing. One's a 17 foot. When I'm fishing slightly out from the bank like I have been today, a 17 foot rod just gives you a lot more control because the longer rod you can mend the line to the float very easily. If you're fishing closer in, closer to the bank, a 15 foot rod is adequate. The swivel at the bottom of the rig, at the top of the 30 centimetre up length, is really important. If you're fishing with double maggot, it stops the bait spinning, so you don't get any tangles on the hook bait. One thing that the great Kevin Ashurst once told me, he says the best way to stop double maggot spinning is to wind a fishing every time, that it never happens. The hooks that I've used are just a Drennan Carbon Match size 20 and just fishing single maggot has been the best bait today, just a single bronze maggot. Today I've caught odd chub up to around about a pound and some quite nice roach. I also had a pike tech of fish that was around about 10 pound and even on an 095 suplex fluorocarbon hook length I managed to play it for three or four minutes before it spit the fish back out at me. If that had been a match, it had probably took the fish and everything, so it was just nice to get the fish back. Today I've fished here on the River Don and I've had an absolutely terrific day's fishing. I've caught dace, I've caught roach and I've also caught chub. Nearly caught a pike as well. But all the River Don round about Sprotborough, the Sprotborough length above the bridge and also down below the bridge, it's fantastic fishing and it's all day ticket fishing so if you want to get on the river and catch some good fish get yourself down here you'll absolutely love this river like i do